Let's give a clubhouse pass to a new member of that Red Sox bullpen who is new to this rivalry. Matt Strom joining the Red Sox in the offseason after some big years in the NL West. Hey, Matt, thanks for the visit. Let me ask you about preparing for an opponent like the Astros that you don't have a whole lot of head-to-head -head against. Does your prep change at all, or is this just another night at the ballpark for you? You know, I try to keep it as much as uh, just another night at the ballpark, no matter who's in town for me. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm an attack pitcher, and I'm going to attack you with my best stuff, and that's just kind of how I've always been my entire career, and uh, it's seemed to pan out a little bit for me. Yeah, it, it has. That's probably why you've been around as long as you have. Let me ask you specifically about the left-handed hitters that you're no doubt going to have to encounter at some point during this series. Brantley, Alvarez, Tucker, since you're a left-handed guy out of the bullpen, do you spend extra time perhaps looking at those guys on video before a series like this starts? I uh, actually just got out of the pitchers meeting. Obviously, you give them a little extra look. Uh, just knowing that when that part of the lineup comes up, uh, more than likely when that phone rings, it's going to be one of us lefties down there. Um, and th those three hitters you just named, they're three great hitters, and uh, you got to be on your A game every night against those guys. Let me ask you about the guy going for you tonight, Garrett Whitlock, because I'm sure as a, a reliever now, and, and you've done plenty of starting in your time in San Diego as well, you look at a guy like Whitlock, not unlike the way we look at him and, and think, oh my gosh, I mean, this guy's from another planet. Tell me about what we yep. should expect from him tonight and, and the difficulty, the process between going from reliever to starter. Yeah, I mean, I I was early in my career, I was with that too. And, uh, you know, something he's got going for him is he's such a level-headed kid and such a humble kid that he's just, he wants a ball in his hand and he just wants to get out whenever whenever AC wants him. But, uh, you know, he's something special. I actually played catch with him one time in spring and that was plenty for me because uh, it feels like he's delivering the ball like six inches into your chest. Like he's got such great <laughs> extension and the ball gets on you so quick. Uh, I feel bad for all those hitters, but uh, you know, he's he's something special and uh, the fans here in Boston are gonna have a, a fun time watching him over the next few years. That's awesome insight. He's hard to even play catch with uh, in that oh, regard. Yeah. That's fun. Hey, One uh, of the most uncomfortable games of catch I've had. Excellent. Hey, uh, as far as uh, home ballpark concern, you, you look very comfortable at Fenway. Uh, the home field yep. advantage for the Red Sox is real clear when they're there. Great fan base. It's usually full. The energy is terrific. 14 of the next 17 for Boston at home. Tell me about the home yep. bullpen and pitching at Fenway. Yeah, I mean, the only other time I experienced Fenway, I was wearing the wrong colors, and uh, you don't want to be wearing the wrong colors coming into this place. Um, these fans are unbelievable. Um, I mean, Wednesday day games, this place is packed, and uh, I mean, you just – you. You take that for granted when you're at other places, but when you're here and you experience it, uh, you know, to be here for 81 games, it's it's a joy and it's, uh, I mean, I'm just honored to, honored to be able to put on this jersey and play for these fans. I know you get the value of pitching as a Red Sox in Boston because you're a fan of the game. You are a collector. In fact, I don't want to put words yep. in your mouth, but you're a self-described <laughs> pack rat, right? Uh, yep. Are, are yep. you collecting memorabilia along the way in your career? You know, I've, I haven't been real big in that. I do get my teammates. I'm not one that I don't like to send stuff over to the other clubhouse and get stuff signed. Um, that's just the competitor in me. I don't want any guy thinking I like them when I'm going to face them in the box or anything. So, uh, you know, I just keep it between me and my teammates. As far as collecting goes, even with memorabilia, it's all it's all stories to me. So. Uh, you know, collecting a jersey of a guy I never played with. Obviously, you want guys like Miguel Cabrera, guys that have, like, changed the history of this game. But, you know, for the most part, I try to keep it as teammates and, like, just personal stories to myself that I can pass on to my kids or to whoever. I know you've got a big social media following with your baseball card collecting. Do you yep. have uh, cards that are particular favorites or more valuable than others? Tell us about your collection. Yeah, so uh, actually one of my favorite cards uh, I do a little YouTube channel where I just open cards at every stadium I'm at and uh, one of my favorite cards I hit was a super fractor which means it's a one of one and it was an on card auto of Pete Alonzo so that was that was kind of cool to hit a super fractor I mean there's guys that have collected 20 years and have never hit one of those in their collecting lives so to to be able to do that that was kind of cool and to get it on video for everyone to see that was that was fun nice so you you mentioned that you're you know you've got some collectibles some personal things for your family um, I know that yeah. before you had a family per se 
you were a dog owner that made that the priority in your life. How is the dog handling the fact that there's competition now? Yeah, I mean, at first he was obviously a little jealous, uh, but you know, they've, they've become best buds now and uh, there he is right there, yeah. My wife, uh, my wife spoils them all, you know. We got our little Maltese, Lolly, she's 15 years old, and then Knox right there, he just, he's gonna turn three here in a few weeks, um, you know, but our dogs are our joy and so is our little daughter and, uh, you know, one big happy family. They all get treated. I mean, my wife treats them better than she treats me, you know, so she takes care of them all. Dude, uh, believe me, I think we all know that feeling, speaking from <laughs> personal experience. Uh, you are one of a very small number of Major League Baseball players from West Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, pretty good company, though, when you think about guys like, at least from the state of North Dakota, Erstad, Travis Hafner, who are we missing? What's the, what's the Mount Rushmore, pun intended, of, of North Dakota yeah. athletes? You're missing the big one, Roger Maris. Of course. Roger Maris, then you got Ersted, you got Hafner, Rick Helling, and then one of my favorite, Chris Coast. Um, those are those are kind of the five that, that stick out to me as uh, my Mount Rushmore in North Dakota baseball. So those, those would be the five. That's a good one. And shame on me for forgetting about Maris there. I put Ersted <laughs> at the top of every list for baseball, though, huge fan. Hey, yeah. before we let you go, no. we do a lot of food on this show. You're a former Padre, you're a current Red Sox. If you had a choice, is it the fish taco or is it bola chowda? Uh, I mean, I've been, even before San Diego, I've been a taco guy. Uh, tacos are my thing. Any kind of taco, I'm, I'm always down for tacos. Way to go. Matt, good to meet you. Good to visit with you. Go get those lefties this week well. against the Astros. Thanks for the time. Will do. Appreciate you.